Hi guys, so in today's video we're actually going to talk about Indicom and the JCF and if you guys have been following my channel for a while you know that this topic has like JCF and Indicom has not been any stranger from my channel. I've talked about both of them, good and bad. Um, but this topic here is where the JCF and Indicom actually went to court and the JCF actually got what they wanted but I don't think they actually really got anything out of it but I'm gonna explain that in the video so let's get into this article and it says let me start over a ruling by the Court of Appeal on Friday which has far-reaching effects for the nature of the relationship between the Independent Commission of Investigation and the Jamaica Constabulary Force over it, which it has oversight forced the suspension of a debate on major organized crime and anti-corruption agency bill in the Senate. The High Court in the 2-1 to one decision ruled that contrary to what Indicom has been suggesting, it does not have the power to arrest or prosecute police personnel. However, however, the court said Indicom officers as private citizens could carry out these arrests and prosecution under common law. Following the ruling, both sides claim the police federation said it had been vindicated while Indicom claimed it never claimed the right to arrest or prosecute. Some police claim that Indicom has always pointed to the section 20 of the act insisting it had the power to arrest and prosecute. Arrest and prosecute. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Senate suspended the debate to give independent status to MOCA to allow time to determine whether the court ruling has any implication for the MOCA bill. At, at issue, the clause in the bill that gives the power of a constable to the Director General of the MOCA. The Governor Senate Parlin Charles Jr., who piloted the bill, asked that for the debate to be suspended to allow time to consider the matter further. In the meantime, the court ruling came at the same time Deputy Superintendent of Police Albert Dyer had his conviction and $800,000 fine overturned. Dyer was brought before the court after he refused to hand over weapons to Indicom following the fatal shooting of a woman in Windsor Heights, Central Village in St. Catherine in August 2013. Dyer was convicted in 2014 and fined. So, from my in um, understanding of what Indicom is and how they go about doing what they're supposed to do. I feel like Indicom is one of those organizations in Jamaica that is just there to do their jobs and their job is what they are doing. They just, if a police is involved in any type of fatal accident or any accident that involves a resident, they go and investigate. I've never heard anyone said Indicom arrested them or prosecuted them or any of that. What I've heard Indicom has done is Indicom have held investigation and put in what they have found about these officers and what disciplinary actions um their stations or higher body or higher power need to take in order to discipline them so what they have done don't happen again and for me personally this hearing or this court um this court case don't change anything or how I view Indicom because I've never heard them say they are they're going to arrest or prosecute anybody the only thing I've heard that Indicom do is investigate um, people in the JCF that have done very grimy very dirty very um what would I say unethical things to um, residents in Jamaica and quite frankly, Indicom has a right to investigate these JCF officers because they need someone that's going to hold them accountable. And if you go into the Indicom files and into the Indicom investigation online, 
you will see that there's plenty of JCF officers that they have investigated and found that they needed to be disciplined or needed to have disciplinary, disciplinary actions against them that are still working, still haven't had any disciplinary actions. They're still go about their business and all of that. So, um, quite frankly, I feel like now they're trying to fight down Indicom and that's not going to be good for Jamaica and Jamaican people because Jamaican Constabulary Force is known for their unethical roles in our communities and when they do their job and they have this nasty tendency of taking up things into their own hands. <laughs> oh, sorry. They have this... Um, nasty habit of taking things into their own hands and misusing their authority that they have been given um, by our people to protect and serve. So these officers that are complaining that Indicom says that they're going to arrest and prosecute them, they're just scared that they are going to lose their job if they slip up and they do something that is illegal or unethical and Indigum is going to find out and have them suspended or fired from their job. That's all it is to me personally. And this court case is not a victory for the JCF or Indicom at all in my opinion. Because Indicom never said that they're going to arrest and prosecute anyone. They have never actually arrested anyone from, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong. I've never heard that of them arresting anybody. And this man that had his conviction overturned, it shows you how corrupt Jamaica is. Indicom um, had him convicted in 2014 and fined for $800,000 and he had his conviction overturned and this was a deputy superintendent of police and the reason why he was convicted and fine is because he actually shot someone shot a woman at that killed her and they wanted Indicom wanted this superintendent to turn over his weapon so they can um, do a proper investigation and test his weapon for ballistics and all that and he downright refused refused to hand over his weapon to Indicom so not only is Indicom getting a fight from the JCF I've also heard Mr. Andrew Holness himself um, criticize Indicom about doing their job and quite frankly I of applause to Indicom because I feel like Indicom is the only organization in Jamaica that's actually doing their jobs like they're not biased they're not anything they're just there to do their jobs and get it over with and I have to give them props for that and the person that is actually in charge of Indicom the president I can tell that he's not about being unethical he's not about the just having a JCF officer get off scot-free he's going to actually hold these JCF officers accountable and accountability is what we need because for far too long JCF officers have gone in Jamaica and roamed the streets for freely and they are basically bad man in a police uniform and just like how Jamaican people throw out a bad man in them community we all shot and kill them that's exactly how Jamaican people afraid I did Jamaica Constabulary Force because they're just as bad, if not worse, than these bad mans where they stay in our community. So, comment in the comment section and tell me what you guys think about this superintendent that actually shot a woman and refused to turn over his weapon to Indicom to get, um, for Indicom to actually do a proper investigation and test it and all that. So without the gun, I think they couldn't convict him because you need to have ballistics and all that to convict him of a crime like that, but he refused. So he got his conviction overturned and his fine that he had to pay. That's crazy. This put me in the, this put me in the realm of the whole Patrick Powell and Kajil Mace um, case. And that's exactly what this is right here. That's exactly what this 
deputy superintendent did. He used his power and authority and got exactly what he wanted. Tell me what you guys think about this court um, ruling that Indicom can prosecute or arrest um, police officers. And tell me if you think that Indicom has ever arrested or do you know of Indicom arresting any officer or prosecuting them. Comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to your girl here on YouTube. I'm a part of here, man. Deuces.